Hey there, homesteaders. It's a really gorgeous day here in the desert. It's really nice to have fall upon us, and things are cooling down a bit, finally. Sweater weather. <laughs> Not quite yet. Are we cooking anything? Uh, yeah, I'll make something. And I'll go out to the high tunnel and see what we have growing and try and make a meal from that. So, sit back, relax, and watch us watch you watch us. So go ahead and just kick back and relax and enjoy the ride. We're Kaliki and Brett, a rugged and adventurous gay couple who are sick and tired of clashing with life in the city. So we decided to head into the desert to chase our dreams and thrive. Along with our furry friends Chuck and Momo, we'll explore DIY projects, tiny house construction, gardening, hiking, cooking, and share what it looks like to jump headfirst into homesteading. So subscribe and join us on our dusty adventures to build this desert dwelling. So we're not quite sure, but we think Titsy might be laying her first egg in here. Special's concerned about what's going on for sure. We were hearing some strange noise coming from Titsy. She's quieted down now, so we'll see. She's about 18 weeks old now? I think so. I think she's yeah. about 18 weeks, and they normally will start laying eggs after 16 weeks, so it seems <clears throat> like this is right on schedule. Yeah, I just heard her making a weird sound, and then she went up into their little coop, which she doesn't normally do in the middle of the day, so I thought something must be going on, and then she kept making those strange little sounds. I don't really want to disturb her too much, but I'm going to try to peek my camera in there and see if we can get a shot of her. Well, she's definitely in there. I can see that she's panting a bit, and she made it into her nesting box. Which is so funny, they haven't really gone into their chicken coop a lot now that we've been letting them just sort of free range around the yard. But, uh, yeah, she's in there. She's in the nesting box. Seems like she knows exactly what to do. Hopefully all goes well. Here she is now. You did so good, Titsy. You did so good. Yeah, are you okay? You had an okay time? I bet. Oh. Let's take a look at your egg. There it is. It's so nice. It's pretty clean and everything. Wow, I'm really amazed. So impressed. Good job. You're a good girl. Should I get a treat for you? You want a special treat? I'm gonna give her just a little treat of some dried worms. Hi, Chucky. Special, you're standing guard. She's hungry now. Titsy, look. Look, for you. Good girl. You did so good. So proud. What do you think, Special? She did a good job. Good girl. It's so interesting that even though no chickens have laid any eggs in here before, Titsy just knew to go in this box, go in the little lane box on the side, and lay an egg. I am so blown away that they just like know what to do. So everything is definitely winding down in the garden here in our yard. This is really exciting this year. We had another Russian olive tree pop up, like this big one here. They're invasive and stuff, but they're also a really great nitrogen fixer, so I'm just gonna let it grow. There's another one there. A couple more back there. There's a few things that are still thriving and probably will through the winter. 
There's a couple different kales down here that I think will probably go well. We're really excited about these huckleberries. We've never grown any before, and it seems like they're taking forever to taste good, but I've had a few that are a little bit better. They're in the nightshade family, so they're related to a tomato, and when you bite into them, you can kind of tell, but they're really nice. They stained my fingers when I tried to save some of the seeds the other day. Our corn back there, it kind of just petered out. Things don't seem to have done that well as far as corn this year. We have some mushrooms that are growing again. The wine cap mushrooms we had a little tidbit about before. So we're excited that those came back. We weren't sure because a different type of mushroom sort of invaded that bed. We think they were inky cap mushrooms, which I don't think they're poisonous, but they're not really what we were looking for. Back down here, we got a lot of tomatoes. These are volunteers, some salsify that kind of... We're not sure if it's going good. We've never grown that before. Lots of blanket flour. Really excited that's going still. As you can see, our greenhouse that we moved in that very first episode is totally overrun again. Lots of this is that knapweed that we have that we don't really care for. We managed to get things like this huckleberry plant to grow in here though, and there's some radishes down there, some beets that are struggling in the shade, arugula, carrots, these things just sort of pop up everywhere here, which is cool. Here's some little apple trees that we had cold stratifying in the fridge and kind of forgot about and one day Brett just noticed that they had sprouted in the bag so we decided to throw them in here and they're taken off. We'll probably have to take them inside to keep them safe over the winter and I'm excited to see if we can get some cool apple trees from seed to grow next year. Well, we wanted to give you guys an update on what's happening here in the high tunnel since we last showed you. As you can see, you no longer just see straight through, and we actually had a huge tower of sunflowers back there, but now we've got some amaranth right here, and some corn right behind us, and we will... That noise is the drip irrigation line finally getting up to pressure. So we're going to water it a little bit and then we'll take you on a little tour around and show you what we still have growing. So it's kind of crazy, but we have an insane amount of aphids going on here. It's a ladybug delight, as you can see. She's just having a buffet time. It's totally crazy, really sticky and kind of gross to us, but the plants are winding down anyways at this point. So we're just kind of letting it happen, sharing the bounty with them. All the kale we've talked about before. Got a couple watermelons. And then there's a big one over there. I'm excited because it's growing on its side like that, or I guess it's growing on its side? I don't know. Is that its side? On its bottom? It's different. It's growing different, so I'm excited to see how that turns out. Hopefully it'll be done soon. Here's all our crazy tomatoes. We just planted some seeds that were down in the bottom of our seed bag. So there were a bunch of carrots which are still down in there and there's beets in there. But these tomato plants just went crazy and we didn't have them caged up or anything so they just spread out all over everything. Yeah, not a lot of them have turned red yet, unfortunately. We're hoping they'll ripen up a bit before the frosts. So if they don't ripen up uh, in time, then we're hoping we might be able to get them to ripen off the vine. We'll see, we've never tried that before, so that would be kind of cool since there are so, so many. Here's our one okra plant that grew this year. We've already harvested two small okra pods off of it that were dried out. We got about 20 seeds out of those two pods. I'm guessing these two are gonna have way more because they're a lot bigger. We have some, I think they're some type of crookneck squash, or maybe they're some kind of gourd, I'm not sure. Mm, little ladybug larva, pupa. We've eaten a few of those, they're pretty good. Oh man, there's so many little ladybug larvas everywhere, whoa. Getting it, going to town on those aphids. That's insane. So we're just a ladybug breeding ground here, basically. 
I think it'll <clears throat> help with our aphid problem next year, though, to kind of just let the ladybugs thrive. We have this other German Johnson tomato, also covered in aphids. I planted this so long ago, but it didn't start growing until we put in the irrigation. Got a couple that might make it. This plant's pretty sad. Zucchini thing. Yeah. I'm really excited because our pumpkins are ripening. <clears throat> this one is just starting to turn a little bit orange. There's one over there. Right in there. I'll go get a closer look. That one's turning really orange. We planted some potatoes here, God, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago, and we never harvested any. So they're really thriving now that we've got this drip line in here. And we're gonna have tons of potatoes eventually because we're just letting them spread, hopefully. We have an endless amount of these West Indian gherkins. It's crazy, I don't know how. They grew so many. We've got plenty of cantaloupes. I'm sure you guys have seen a couple shots of those before. We're really proud of them. Can't wait to eat them. This plant looks like it's ready to give out for fall. This is probably the biggest nasturtium plant I've ever encountered. All of this one right here is one plant intermingled with the gherkins. This amaranth here is one of the really cool ones. It's the only one that's got the super droopy tendrils of seeds on it. And then here's the Chinese amaranth. And I think some chicory has decided to live in here. Late season chicory. So much more, countless things. We don't really know all of what's growing in here. It's really cool to see this little plot of land though change so much from when we first started growing. When we first tried to garden out here, we just came and tried to mix in a little compost with the dirt that was here. And we were just watering it with a hose every day and barely anything grew in here. We were just thinking it was like the ground was so dead, which it kind of was, but really it just needed a little attention, some deep watering, and this is able to happen. I think this will definitely improve the soil microbiome a lot, so next year our crops can really do good with a little bit of extra planting and the early season irrigation like this. I think it'll be a whole new game. <laughs> yeah, I think planting will be a really important step because we were just kind of willy-nilly throwing seeds around this year, seeing what would grow. Which is, it has its benefits, we can kind of get an idea of what things are gonna like, what conditions, but it doesn't really make it easy to harvest when you just have this chaotic mess of plants going everywhere. But it is fun to come out here and have it be like a little jungle. <laughs> so that's it for our high tunnel. Hope it holds up through the winter and we get another good growing season out of it at least. We'll see. Oh, hi, Darby. Come on in. Today, I'm going to be making something using only things that I've grown in the high tunnel. One of the easiest things to make when you have a bunch of different vegetables is a soup. So, that's what I'm going to do. So, why don't we head out there first?
I've got all my ingredients prepped and ready to go now, so let's get started on the soup. So I've added a little bit of oil to a preheated pan and now I'm going to add in my tomatoes, carrots, and onions. So in here I have the zucchini, these little gherkins, kale, and green onions all chopped up. They'll go in when the soup is almost done because they don't really need to cook very much. Not a whole lot, but it'll be a nice addition to the soup. Come on, focus, there you go. So in the future I would not try to do the oats and wheat together because the wheat falls out of the husk really easily and the oats take a little bit more work to get them out. So definitely want to do them separately. Lesson learned, though. I'm going to add the kale, these zucchini, green onions, and the little gherkins. Add that all into the rest of the soup, and that will just cook for about three or four more minutes just till it softens up. It's all done. I just added a little bit of chopped up basil and rosemary to it to finish it off. What? When I say what, it doesn't mean you come over here. What? No. You got room there? It's gonna work out? Yeah, there. I got plenty of room. It's so, so hot, I'm scared. It's, yeah, it's real hot. Maybe like stir it around a little bit. Oh. So the soup's all ready. It was 
just entirely things that we grew except for a little bit of oil and the salt. So that's exciting. Pretty good. Um, we'll see how it tastes. Uh, my thoughts are it's too much kale. But it smells just like kale at the end. So does it? Well, the the broth is good. I taste that. That's good. Hmm. It's actually pretty good. It's better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. It's like a vegetable barley kind of soup. Yeah. I'm curious, those gherkins are weird. I mean, in general, they're sour and weird most of the time, so I'm interested in what they'll be like in here. Yeah, I kind of like them cooked a little bit. Mm. It's interesting. All the different things. Yeah. Mm, that zucchini thing was nice. Mmm. Yeah, it is. These little gherkins are so, so seedy. That's hard to see. Through that. that, that mm, no. Mm. Uh, no. <laughs> so full of seeds, but it's nice. Well, that concludes another week here at Desert Dwelling. We really appreciate you watching, as always. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you haven't done all those things already. And we will see you next Tuesday.